Hello and welcome to the screencast on MATLAB command line plotting. This is part one of a multi-part screencast in which we're going to explore how to change the appearance and style of a MATLAB plot from the command line or from an M file. In this part one, we're going to look at how to change the color and style of a plot, how to change its thickness, and how to change the presence and the appearance of data markers. In part two, we're going to move on to talk about labels, grids, tick marks, and legends. The main reason we want to think about changing plot styles and so on from the command line or from an M file is that if I do this in an M file and not in the plot tools window or with the easy plot command, I can write programs or scripts that actually output and alter graphical objects. And this is a very powerful thing that MATLAB is designed to do. So what I have here is an M file that just will, when executed, and I'll go ahead and click the play button, uh, just produces a very simple basic plot of y equals x squared. Here x is defined from negative 4 to 4 and the step size is 0.1. Uh, y is x squared, and I plotted x, y. So let's see how we might alter the look and feel of this graph, not by clicking the plot tools window, but rather by passing some plot options into this plot command. First of all, I should mention that at any time you want to look up these plot options, we're going to look type doc line spec into the command window or through the help system. And this is going to bring up a page that lists all the possible options that you can give to a MATLAB plot command. First thing we'll do here is add an extra option after x comma y, put another comma. And if I want to change the color of my line from a blue solid line to a red solid line, I'm going to type quote dash r end quote. I'll go ahead and execute that M file and you'll see it does change to red. What happened here is I used a plot option after the variables have been defined. It's encased in single quotes as you can see. The dash here indicates that I'm going to keep the line at a, at a solid line rather than a dashed line, and the R changes the color to red. The other options for colors, if you go here to the line spec page in the uh, help documentation, you can see them right here. R is red, bl green, blue, and several other options as well. And we'll see some of those as we go. There are other also things I could do instead of a single line, if I have a double line like so, two dashes, it will change the plot to a dash line instead of a solid line. The options I can use for the line style are listed up here. A solid line, in quotes, would be a solid. Uh, a single dash would be a solid line. A double dash would be a dash line. I can create dotted, dash dot, or no line at all. So for example, if I wanted to change my plot here to a blue dash line, uh, the two dashes here would make it a dash line and change the R to a B. And when I plot again, it changed to a blue dash line. If I wanted a yellow dash dot line, I would type dash dot and then a Y inside those quotes. The yellow is a little hard to see. In fact, it's basically impossible to see, but it is a dash dot yellow line. Let's change this back to a single or solid red line so we can see it. Now, controlling the thickness, one of the things that makes this hard to see, even when it's red, is that it's still fairly thin. This is the standard default thickness I get through just a straight plot command. I can control that plot thickness by passing another option into this plot command. After the line style and color have been specified, I can add another comma. And if I want to change the line width, I'm going to put quote line width, capital L, capital W here, line width and then another comma, and then pass it a number that will specify the thickness. For example, if I type line width 3, click this again, I will have a solid red line that has a thickness of 3. So again, the x and y variables are there always to designate the variables I'm plotting. The quote, the single quote with the dash or double dash or whatever you want, and the letter that spec will specify the style and color, and then another comma, I can pass it the line width option and another number that will specify how thick. 10, for example, is extremely thick. 1 is the default. Let's leave this at 3 just for now. I'll re-execute this M file to get it back to a thickness of 3. Now, one of the things that we learned in the plot about the plot command is that MATLAB doesn't actually plot functions so much as it plots points. Now we see what appears to be a smooth curve over here, but actually what it is is a lot of points. Uh, negative 4, 0, or 0.1 to 4. If I call back up uh, my command window and look at the x vector over here, I see that uh, under x, x is actually an 81 element vector. So when I look at my plot, what appears to be a smooth curve is actually 81 little dots with straight lines connecting them. So it appears smooth because there are so many dots. Uh, I can actually plot 
markers on top of each of those dots if I want to. And how I'm going to do that is, uh, first of all, so this will be a little more visible, I'm going to change X to 1. So it's going to, this is going to produce a very blocky looking graph here. But I'm going to be able to see, you can almost see the data points where the uh, curve changes direction and where I'm pointing to right now. Now if I want to see some markers right on top of those dots, I can, guess what, pass another plot to this. If this is going to come after the color specification here, so dash R. If I put an O here, and replot. What you see here is I have little circles that appear on top of each of the points that were actually plotted. And again, I can go back to the line spec help file and look under marker specifiers. And this gives me a number of different shapes that I can put on top of those markers. Let me go back to the M file and the window. I'm going to change the line width back to 1, so this is a little easier to see the circles. There you see the hollow circles now that have been plotted. Uh, for example, if I wanted to plot a, a cross at each of the uh, markers, I would need to add an X after the R instead of an O. Pass it an X, and when I plot it again, I have little teeny tiny markers here. The fact they're so small might be problematic and we're going to change the size of those in just a minute. Or if I want to have diamonds or squares, S would be the marker that I would choose to use. So I replace the X with an S, plot it again, and there are little squares on here. I can also combine all these things at once. I can change, uh, for example, keeping this, I can change it to a dash line. Remember we're going to add a double dash here. And there we have a dashed graph with square markers. I can change the R to a B and get a blue dashed graph with square markers. And what's great about this process is there are so many options. I can create basically any looking graph that I want to with this. But of course, that's also the downside is that there are so many options, it's difficult to keep them in mind. My advice would be simply to go to this web, this, uh, this uh, help page for line spec and just simply print it off and keep it tacked to your wall or stuck inside your wallet for a reference. I keep coming back to this every single time when I want to plot something. Now, if I wanted to change the way the markers appear, I can do that too with yet another plot option that I pass into the plot command. Uh, if I want to have the, for example, the color of the marker different than the color of the line, I'm going to go here to the very end and add another comma. And the command here is marker edge color. Make sure to capitalize only the M, the E, and the C on this. And then I'm going to pass it uh, a color code that is the same as I use for the graph. So, for example, if I wanted to create this same figure we're looking at here, but with the graph being blue but the markers red, I'm just going to add this little option at the end. Marker edge color should be red and that is what we see now. I can fill in those markers too by typing yet another option uh, and that would be the marker face color. Face color being the space inside the squares here. Close that quote and then I will add for example uh, K in quotes and that will create a graph where the markers, uh, the graph is blue, the marker edge is red, and the marker uh, face, the stuff inside it, is black. And you get the impression that we can create just about any sort of look we want to. And I'm going to do one more thing here, and that's change the size of those markers. Say I don't like them to be so small. Well, there's one more option I could pass, and it is marker size. And then just pass it a number that roughly corresponds to the thickness that we used for line width up here. So, for example, pass it the number three. It's going to well, actually that shrinks the numbers down. You have to you have to experiment with these uh, these sizes a little bit. If I pass it ten, it's going to create markers that are really quite visible. So, for example, if you had a, a collection of data, not necessarily a mathematical function, but data, and you wanted to plot them, and you really wanted to see where the data points are and just sort of faintly see the uh, line that connects them, this would be a good sort of template to start using. So let's recap what we learned in the screencast. We've learned that we can control the line type and color of a plot with a single quote option, such as the ones you see here, just following the x and y variables in the plot command. We can also control the thickness by following that with the line width option, and we can control whether markers appear by adding a single text character after the color, and then we can control whether the markers appear or in how they look with these three commands here. And we've also learned that doc line spec is your friend. You can look these options up at any time you want. Thanks for watching.